Good day. It's Tuesday, June the 15th. I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. Today we're joined by Sebastian Melo, CEO, and David Montpetit, CFO, and Steve Lee, uh, head of IR at DBOX. DBOX provides haptic or physical response systems to multimedia experiences, including movies, both at home and theaters, and video games. Sebastian and David will be giving a brief presentation highlighting the dynamics of the movie theater business as the recovery begins and theaters reopen. Also, they will be discussing the video game market and their opportunities with the launch of products this fall and more initiatives going forward. Sebastian first presented to us in late April, providing a full overview of the company. This presentation will focus on the two markets, the theater and the video game market. Sebastian and David, thanks for making the time. How are things going? Very good. Thank you, Martin, for having us uh, again here. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, happy as well that everyone took some precious time from their agenda. So, yeah, business is going well and personally, we're fine. All right. So, yeah, I want to go through the uh, presentation deck and give us uh, some overview on uh, how your, your two key markets are going. Perfect. Thank you. So first, uh, one thing I wanted to say uh, was say when we when I started as CEO, uh, well, well, both uh, David, Stephen, and I, Steve and I had one key objective was to improve our communication with the financial market. So that's why events like that that we're creating uh, for us are really important, and uh, we are looking to have that three or four times a year. So business update to support our PR strategy and, uh, and as well, of course, our social social media communication. So as you uh, uh, greatly introduced, Martin, we have uh, uh, four key objectives today. So definitely uh, come back quickly on DBAC's vision and foundation. Secondly, expand on the theatrical recovery, which has started. Uh, talk about our gaming initiative. And of course, answer as much question as we can from the audience and from Martin. And uh, for uh, investors that are new to DBAC, of course, a general overview is available on the Regis Research YouTube channel. So Mr. Steve, if you can flip the slide, please. So it's coming, audience, technology stuff. There we so go. Of course, usual disclaimer. So I'm sure everyone knows that, so we can continue. Perfect. So a uh, quick two minutes. Like I said, we did the, the full spectrum, but uh, Here's people where DBox plays. So DBox definitely, we know that people have been consuming experiences and, and, and content for a long time. And when you think about all your experiences, mostly in the last eight year, it's been through uh, sight and sound. So of course you talk about TV, gaming, people hear things, air see things. And it's been there for at least three, four years. So people now are more looking for immersivity. So how to experience the experience. You have all those consumer brand, Porsche, things like that, that wants to connect with consumers. There's the arrival as well of VR and AR, all those technology that are requesting a more immersive experience from the body. And there's definitely the millennial and the experience economy. So all those reasons that people are pushing for the use of aptic in multiple sectors. And that's what we do. So when we're saying the word aptics, is when you involve the body uh, to create a full experience. Uh, so we live that, of course, through the sight, uh, through the hearings, and definitely now with aptic. You can think, and if you go in your day-to-day -day or your experiences, you see more and more in simulation. You see the involvement in the body in theme park. And definitely, as we uh, presented in the last year, now it's coming closer through music, concert, gaming, etc. So that's what the box is is all about. Uh, people have known us in the past definitely for the movie industry, so action pack movie. But when you go more in details, all that haptic experiences goes through subtlety from music, strings or guitar, feeling that you can just go to a concert of create as in a horror movie, some suspense uh, texture. So this is what we do. And that's why one of the transition that the debug was making probably from a corporate communication point of view is we're not a theatrical company. We are not a simulation company. DBOX is an experience and technology company. Next slide, Steve. So simply said again, I want to have so that we keep some takeaways from DBOX uh, competitive advantage and positioning. So first, 
First thing, so Aptic, what the market we call Aptic. So this is not a fade. So this is a market growing at 18% KGAR to be to reach in seven years, 41 billion. So this market is there and it's there to stay. And D-Box is right at, in the middle of that revolution. Secondly, for people that have follow, one of the great things that D-Box done through the night is to build really over the last 20 year, a robust and proven end-to-end -end fidelity platform, which of course, include software, hardware, and hardware, so a turnkey solution that is able to provide all those subtiles and complex experiences in various markets. Content, we people consume more content, so we move from a movie company, now moving to, of course, having a breadth of content, so now over 2,000 titles, and of course, using AI, SDK, and different technology to scale the company faster. Series is, is becoming definitely a, an area where we are adding hundreds of hours of series as we move along. And definitely as well, uh, an angle that has been uh, probably uh, uh, not put on the radar is people thought that the Aptic was just about entertainment and about just a gimmick of, I like that, but uh, uh, D-Box in the last three, four years has been scientific survey to really see the impact of what is eye affordability aptic onto the brain, explaining from a scientific point of view, how we get the brain more in immersivity and how it, it, it brings value for the consumer purposes. And when you talk about all that for that neuro concept of how we affect the brain, it definitely give new horizon in the future for areas such as relaxation, wellness, teaching and health. So the good news about all that is that with, with D-Box uh, is that the technology has been commercially validated and scientifically validated in various market, theater, commercial, simulation, and home market. Next slide, Mr. Steve. So before the COVID, D-Box was known mainly to be to get focused on the commercial market only up to 2020. And this was important. So of course, uh, people got to know us in theatrical, theme park, et cetera, simulation. But as we announced in the strategic uh, uh, shareholder meeting last 2020, now we wanna tackle and be more aggressive in the consumer market, mainly in bringing the aptic and the experiences to racing rigs, uh, gaming seats, and of course, home, home entertainment seats. So that's an angle that the box want to play, always focusing on the experience. And D-Box, if we summarize the D-Box strategic plan is to work with partners to bring its, its, uh, its a hardware, software, and content aptic technology platform to various markets, namely, of course, as we said, commercial and home, and to develop a licensing and subscription business model uh, so to create some recurring revenue and um, a, a, good, uh, a good financial model. So... Uh, so that's really a quick summary. As we said, we already made a presentation over the vision, but I think it's important that people uh, focus that we're not a theatrical company and that and, and, and that you understand how we want to bring Aptic to multiple sector. So, so back, I'll move the, yes, Martin. Sure. Yeah, just um, you, you talked about the, re, the the subscription model. Could you just, yeah. maybe we can get into it later, but like how, how do you bring the subscription model to the, the home? Perfect. So I'll bring the angle. So, so traditionally, to, to get your question, if we look at the financial statement, D-Box was making 75% of its sale through hardware sales. And of course, we had our, our, I would say, a recurring business model coming from the theatrical industry. So that was where we are right now. Where we aim to be progressively over the five, five years to the subscription model is definitely we see licensing and, and, and subscription coming from threefold. So, well, well. First, of course, we'll stay with our theatrical recurring revenue. That's one. Secondly, everything we're gonna be doing into the consumer business will have a subscription-based model. So either you're gonna be buying a racing rig or a gaming seat, a home seat, people will have to buy, subscribe to content to get their aptic content connected to their experiences. So that's where the subscription model comes in. And definitely from a te technology angle, we wanna focus on the subscription and the experience. So when we're dealing with bigger customer as well, we want to we want to work in a licensing model instead of having to sell hardware and to involve our 
our, our liquidity into a balance sheet full of inventory. We prefer to tie them directly to our third party manufacturing sources. We'll control them and get a licensing fee in the middle. So in the big player, we're gonna have that. So recurring from theater, subscription from home and licensing from hardware uh, solution to provide the experience. All right. Good. So, so, so we'll move to Mr. David Mopetzi that definitely will talk about a theatrical recovery, something we're really pleased it's coming and we have, we anticipate great return. So Mr. Mopetzi, floor is yours. Thank you, Sebastien. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. So uh, the theatrical uh, segment is an important one uh, for D-Box. Uh, Pre-pandemic, it represents 50% of our total revenues. About half of the theatrical revenues are from the box ticket portion of the premium charged by the, the to the consumer by our exhibitor. So uh, many things happen in the theatrical and content field within the last few months and this business starts showing a recovery for which we are still uh, cautiously optimistic. Um, so on this slide, uh, you, you can see that the vaccination is well underway in the box major market. As an example, in the USA, more than 63 people, person people have already had their first shot where 10 person have already had their second shot as well. So our major customer in the US like Cinemark, uh, are, are, which are important, are already fully operational in the US right now. Um, so compared to that in Canada, uh, because vaccination is, uh, is well underway as well, uh, provin provincial social distanciation measure limit the theatrical to be fully open. As an example, in Ontario, they're still closed and in Quebec are open, so which are the two biggest markets in Canada. In the European market, 47% uh, 40, 40, of the, the people there have already their, sh their first shot of the vaccine, but uh, they have they're struggling to reopen the theater and we expect more a, an opening uh, based on what we understand from the legislation on the, in July uh, 2021. So, uh, so next slide, uh, Steve. So D-Box uh, premium offering sold more ticket for the latest King Kong uh, compared to the previous one two years ago uh, with full attendance. Uh, we uh, D-Box uh, experienced a 20% more uh, ticket selling with, with that release, which is a uh, great, great news. So when we look at uh, the next big releases, which is F9, so Steve, you can, you can move on on the next slide. Yeah, so when we look at the, uh, the next big release, which is F9, already showing worldwide numbers are really strong. Uh, the film, uh, the film surpassed the, the mark last weekend, uh, about two hundred fifty million dollar uh, overseas, without the domestic market, which is already a great mark. Uh, three quarter of this revenue are coming from the China market, which Godzilla and King Kong at the Iris, the Iris uh, important movie uh, from the U.S. Uh, as a performance in China. The upcoming list of titles that, as you can see on the screen, which contain the Avenger, Black Widow, um, James Bond, uh, time, No Time to Die, Top Gun, and Space Jam, all, all these blockbusters will come out and we'll, uh, we'll expect to have uh, the same kind of, uh, of performance than, the, than the, the first movie, King Kong movie. Dave, Dave Bucks, wrong part. Yes. Sorry, on the King Kong movie. So, so you're saying you're... That was your best D-Box movie uh, uh, to date in the... Uh, uh... No, okay. what, what I was saying is that King, the, 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 King, the, last, the latest King Kong, we, we performed better than the, the previous one two years ago when uh, it was full attendance in the theater. There were no COVID, there were no uh, uh, distance social, social distanciation regulation at the time. So when we look at the number of tickets that we sold with, with the, this King Kong movie, it was 20% more than the previous gotcha. one. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah. Good. So I will just uh, uh, continue. Uh, so also on the, on the movie, uh, the theater business, uh, D-Box strong partner base uh, with solid balance sheet already looking to reinvest 
in the premium experience. Dbox uh, being the leader in this area for the for their consumer and to increase their the most important KPI for the theatrical business, which is the average tickets, the average tickets sold. So Dbox announced uh, last May uh, eight new rooms with our uh, important partner in the U.S. Cinemarks. Uh, that will be rolled out within the next few months. Um, also on the uh, studio content side, um, latest news uh, in this area, Amazon bought uh, MGM to add uh, IP content to its streaming offering uh, and improve uh, its creation house to, for derivative content uh, and product in the future. Uh, also, uh, our partner Cinemark announced with uh, Netflix also in last May that Cinemark will, pre will premiere Army of Debt within the 600 screen uh, in the US before it will be released on Netflix. Uh, also, Blockbuster Derivative Series is developing uh, fast, faster than ever. Uh, Star Wars Mandalorian lasts uh, in the last two years and Bad Batch this year on Disney Plus, as well as uh, Loki and Black Widow for Avengers. So there's a uh, there's a lot of potential also in this area and those Mandalorian and Bad Batch uh, are available also in D-Box. Gaming on the big screen also is coming. Cinemarks and Cineza, two important cust customer of D-Box, uh, partner for, announced two weeks ago that uh, they will bring initiative for gamer in their theater to play their games on the big screen. So... When we look at all these activities and partnership in the entertainment industry lately, no one has a crystal ball about how conversion will end up, but D-Box as the leader in premium experience will, will, is well positioned to be at the center of the premium experience. In this challenging time, everyone is trying to get, to get additional share of the consumer wallet and getting more value from their asset. Exhibitors are trying to maximize their real estate Dbox is addressing those issues and having already demonstrated its pertinence in theatrical business by enhancing consumer experience and creating value for exhibitor. Dbox is also expanding its offering in the home entertainment market by launching with partner Gaming C next fall, as Steve will highlight in a few minutes. So Dbox is an aptic experience ecosystem, allowing its partner to grow and expand in, in various business models. So, Steve, let's talk about more in detail about the gaming market. Maybe David, before we jump in, maybe, yeah. maybe for the audience, there's there, the, I think some of the trends that David just presented are interesting for Dbox in terms of positioning. As we saw, we don't have any crystal ball, but I'll get just two examples on the real floor. So, in the past, when we had, of course, our, our all our theatrical relation coming from ten years being in theatrical, like you had a big Chinese wall, you couldn't talk to theatrical people about home content. In fact, it was an internal war internally at Disney between two. And now this is really changing. So recently when I made a, a tourney about discussing with all of those, they ask us about the consumer business. Even Bob Shapek, the new CEO of Disney has changed all the org structure to, to start from an IP and moving something horizontally so people will not work in silo. So I think there's that, that dimension that David is saying that for us it's interesting because we're able to not tip, have to take to and walk on eggs about moving to theatrical who have been making millions for you and to bring those relations to other segments. I'm not saying it won't take it, it won't take squeaks, but that's one of the trends that I think is quite interesting. And, and the second thing uh, as well, what is interesting from a, uh, from a transition point of view is of course, before the COVID, we know that theater had to change, et cetera. And, 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 and but of, of, sometimes they were stuck into that, that they're into their theatrical paradigm. Now the good news is everything is, they have to reinvent themselves even more quicker because of the acquisition we talked about, about getting a full experience. So definitely D-Box can provide VR, D-Box can provide through partners racing, can provide rec room, can provide consumer and even have a strategy up to home. So this is something as well when we get, we're presenting to those same customers that like we're able to arrive with a full offering and not just saying we're a theatrical provider. So, well, I, for us. I, yeah, I, I would think in, in a sense they like, well, it's a it's sort of a challenge for the, the theaters having the Netflix and everything at home. It's created the, more competition for everyone where you can't have sticky floors in the theater anymore. It, it, you have to go there and get and you're paying premium money. So you get a better 
premium uh, experience from that. Um, in your talks with the, the movie studios, you kind of alluded to it. They're looking at content across the spectrum. Uh, any other insights into how they sort of view ways of like, like adding premium value and really, because there's so many ways to differentiate your content from other, or they're trying to find more ways to differentiate. Um, I don't know, can you, you give us a little more insight into how the, the studios are thinking uh, about that and or yeah. any perspectives? Well, right now, we're saying from a studio perspective, one of the angles, definitely, we, we all know that uh, it's all about streaming right now. So most of the studio, except Sony, had are pushing a, a, a streaming platform. Um, that's great, definitely a focus right now that people are more internally focused about growing their streaming, that we're investing on, the, uh, they're investing on theatrical. So that's one angle. Uh, but it creates inter inter interesting stuff. So definitely what it means right now is they have to see their, I use that, 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 that movie production over a wider strategy and not just saying on the left, you're going to be doing that and on the right, you're going to be doing that. So that's, that's an angle that definitely the, the angle is coming from the, 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 well, the, the traction is coming from the consumer side. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, really uh, important uh, that that is uh, coming from studio, and um, I had some things to me just just went away, so that's one of the things that we have from uh, studio. And second thing as well, we had if I take example uh, internally at Sony, they they made a rearrangement re to to start from the IP and create positions that were looking broadly about how to use the movie and how to expand in various type of of partnership. So this is where, where the end goal right now, it, it is positioned and they focus on one consumer instead of one IP. Now they're saying the consumer is from home. How do I tackle them from various actions? So this, this is how it's playing right now. And the last thing that is a challenge that we'll see what, what evolve is of course people, if I talk from the consumer in the past, we were paying the cable rate right? and we said cable was high. And of course now you were paying streaming, let's say Netflix $15. Now, one of the things that is happening as people, as there's more and more IP, there's a churn rate. So people are, let's say, subscribing to, to Disney Plus. But one of the things that has been increasing because you have now Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, and Netflix, Amazon Prime, people subscribe for three months. They get everything that they want and they get out. So the churn rate is going down. So now the short-term strategy that was if you get the customer was there for a long time, now it feels that they sign a customer, but at the turn rate in the 20, 30% level. So this is important for us about keeping the consumer, uh, differentiating themselves to keep the consumer longer into their offering. Okay, yeah. So yeah, people are, yeah, you, you, you fill up on all your Netflix, then you switch over to get all your, uh, your uh, Disney Plus content, and then you go to HBO and that. So they're trying to figure out ways where you'll stick in one uh, in one thing longer, and then hopefully uh, D box can be a part of that. Okay. Yeah. So that would be the studio angles. All right. So moving to Mr. Steve on the uh, on on the gaming. Thank you, uh, Sebastian. Thank you, Martin. Good afternoon to everybody. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you know. DBOX has always been, you know, focusing on the commercial entertainment market. Uh, about last year, uh, at the annual uh, meeting, that's where we started to share our vision of the consumer uh, market for home. And one of the big uh, segments in the home entertainment is the gaming. DBOX is not new to gaming. We've been doing that for about 10 years where we've been coding a lot of Gay, uh, racing games, flight games. And uh, around August last year, we announced a partnership with Ubisoft where we started, uh, we launched the uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and which is a AAA game, which means it's a game that has been, has lots of users in the millions. And so part of our gaming strategy uh, entering into that market is really to focus on uh, one, the content strategy. You know, content strategy has, uh, I would say, different objectives for us. You know, technically, we could 
and this is something we're developing right now and uh, is we ha we're going to develop a mode where uh, all PC games, you know, will have immersive experience on their gaming chair. And so that that is a breakthrough in terms of technology for D-Box. Uh, and we believe this is going to be enable us to really scale up the uh, availability of content. Of course, you know, for us, D-Box is always important to partner with studios because they have a very strong relationship with uh, their fan base. And so what, one thing we want to do is to make sure that we get to connect through their fan base through that relationship. So doing partnerships with them will, will, be, uh, with good, will be good for both parties. The other thing that uh, is, is gonna be, I think a game changer in the marketplace is that if you compare to what's available right now, you know, I see there's uh, uh, people call haptic chairs, uh, but it's really only vibration, it's limited to vibration. And what D-Box brings is texture and motion. So to have the complete immersiveness. And so this is something that we think is gonna be a game changer to the marketplace, a bit as we've done in the movie theater uh, industry. Finally, one of the things that I think is gonna be the future of D-Box is we're gonna be leveraging our haptic code to different type of device, which I will show in the uh, next slide. So if you see on this current slide, you know, you can see a gaming seat, which <laughs> the picture is uh, kind of blurry uh, because that's the, uh, you know, we just received the <laughs> promotional images from uh, Cooler Master. So we can't show it today, but uh, uh, so we kept it blurry. Uh, you see a racing simulator, haptic pedals, and a haptic platform. And all this is to show that down the road, the, the, the business model for D-Box is to leverage that haptic code to power the different device. And we can even go one step further. You know, you can imagine a steering wheel, a mobile phone, and all those devices can be connected through uh, our uh, haptic code. Um, uh, one thing important to note, you know, in the recent months is that deal we've done with the uh, SIM tag which is about a million dollars uh, for the haptic pedals. Well, that deal, why it's important for D-Box is because this is one of the uh, first experience that is not seated uh, that we've been developing. And it, it shows, you know, that vision I just shared that one day we can expand to other type of device, you know, whether it's a gaming controllers and uh, those joysticks. Uh, one thing that I forgot to add, uh, yeah, so there's the joysticks, steering, steering wheels, haptic vest. And so these are all, you know, very interesting opportunities for D-Box down the road. Oh, recently, a lot of uh, investors are asking me about Cooler Master. You know, they saw the press release uh, last December for a gaming chair. And we're happy to say today that... Uh, is still on track. The plan is still to launch in 2021. Uh, what's interesting is that, uh, as I mentioned before, it's not just going to be a vibration, but you know, consumers and gamers will have the uh, joy to feel texture and motion through that chair. And Steve, sorry, yeah. when you talk about vi like haptic, what you do it is sort of vibration, but it's weight. Like you talk about. Uh, texture and so forth. Are, are those other uh, games, are they just basically sort of a subwoofer in your chair where the louder the noise is, the more you vibrate or are they integrated at all in with the, the movement and the explosions and whatever else sort of action that's going on the screen? Well, it is, so the way we code it, you know, it is integrated to the game. So obviously, the, uh, we take into account the environment. So it's not only uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the sound, it's not only based on the sound. Of course, you know, the sound is 
you know, to provide a uh, certain uh, level of experience, you know, is a great way, you know, and this is something in AI is a lot of times based on sound, but I think we have developed a unique way to, to improve the uh, gaming experience uh, maybe for the just, users. Maybe just pertain to add on that, on your question is, when people are looking at other aptic, there's a they start to have multiple, I would say, entry level aptic product, which, as you say, Martin, are something like that, meaning they either shoes, vests, etc. It's I'm not saying it, it cannot be cool, but it's limited in terms of capacity, as you read like a subwoofer that you hear something and you react. One of the strain of D box is definitely is we, we are able to do all those things, so to do the same thing or audio, but when you need in motion or dynamic, you need to be in real time. So we need to connect into the game, connect into the joystick, connect into telemetry, connect into the original content. So that's what makes the big difference where we're coming from to new entrants in the market. So it definitely provides two things, definitely a higher level of immersivity and experiences, a full experience. <clears throat> and secondly, a partnership level, which of course we, can, we knock on those door of those people, which has limited experiences and we break additional experiences into their devices. So let's say an entry level, we could add experiences and charge a license fee to, to upgrade their product and of course make money in the run. So that's part of the plan to, to connect with those devices. Yeah, and, and what, what I was getting at is your competitor, like there are some other sort of haptic chairs, but the, they, they don't have a plug in deep into the game like you have with um, uh, Assassin's Creed or, or any of those, right? No. Nope. Um, when the, the PS5 came out, they've got their dual sense with a controller with some haptic feedback that's a lot more, I guess, similar. They, they've got a lot more texture and, and stuff with that. Could you talk about the, the PS5 and I know, do, or, like, like, does that integrate at all with you guys or, or is it just getting the consumer awareness higher level? It's like, oh, we can have more than just a, a sort of a dumb vibrating thing with that's a subwoofer that it gives them more uh more texture and, and more nuance well, in terms of that and specifically the console well, first what is interesting about that <clears throat> getting from playstation if even if you look into your mobile phone you'll see that apple now that has an aptic component to it in terms of so people are beginning to integrate the concept of aptic so this is true because of course it, it's nice to be alone into an industry but when you're alone you don't have an industry so, yeah. so this is really good that a lot of people are getting some more certain traction. So that's one. In terms of console uh, compatibility, we, 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 the box plays in two angle to make, I would say, short terms win and mid -term, and mid terms positioning. Short term wins, of course, is, no, I'll start from the run. So of course, mm -hmm. D box is discussing with Xbox, Sony to have the commercial compatibility. The, the, the challenge or well, the, the, the steps are not technical, they're commercial because of course we have been working with Xbox and launching games and Sony for many years. The only thing when you want to, what, to use through the console compatibility, the full, let's say the full experiences, it's a long process, it's administrative, even if you put dollars. So the way we do that is we have multiple game, multiple studios with are pushing the direction to do that as soon as possible. So this is the, what we're saying, everything is already on the roll to have, let's say, console compatibility, of course, PlayStation and, and that, and that could include as well the joystick. Um, as well on the short term, we're making, as Steve was saying, some, some experiences. We do not need that compatibility, as you were saying. So PC, we can connect into the joystick and as well use all the experiences. And same thing for the console, we can use all the audio that is already there to create an initial experiences. So, so yes, PlayStation, PS5, it gets into the direction of Aptic. Definitely we're able to, to, we're discussing with them and I've been discussing with them and then we're looking to have uh, somewhere in 2022 full compatibility with Xbox and, and, uh, and uh, PlayStation. I would think your ultimate goal would be to be like the Dolby of Haptic systems where you license it out, everyone can, Put it, put that in there. You're obviously you, you've you've partnership with Ubisoft and with Audio Kinetic. Yeah. I, I think is so you're you're getting embedded further in there. Could you talk about sort of? Am I right to sort of crudely? You'd like to be the the Dolby of haptic and like sort of the initiatives you're doing to, to sort of to make that happen. 
Uh, well, definitely, and Martin, that's a great point. So the end goal of the future, we wouldn't care not to sell hardware anymore. anymore. We're going to be start selling, continue to sell hardware in the upcoming years. But what we want to put as you're selling is to have, to provide the tools so people can code Aptic from the production standpoint. Definitely that we can QC it would be like some kind of Apple store where people are able to add Aptic that they're not able to monetize. And because they need to connect to our algorithm to all those hardware, we're going to be making that subscription connection and distribution of codes. So yeah, that's what we're aiming. So moving to our, our ecosystem with our hardware to any type of solution that will be there. And Audio Kinetic is one of the reasons we signed that. And then, and of course, it's going to be deployed this year. Is Audio Kinetic is a tool that is used by 65% of the gaming, the gaming content producer the big one, the small one, to inter integrate audio into games from people at university to Ubisoft and all those ones. And we're going to be integrated how to code D-Box Aptic easily by content producer. So they'll be able to, to, and to code for free, but to, to monetize that, it's luck. You need to talk with D-Box. We need to make a commercial agreement. So for us, we're giving the productivity to tools into the crowd of, of producer to speed up quiz quickly and move to a more licensing reference model. All right. So Martin, just want to uh, uh, add to, uh, I think a few things Sebastian just said, you know, one of the key things in terms of value proposition that we, we have developed for gamers is that the way we code it, I think it brings uh, those haptic cues, brings a lot more value to gamers where it's not only fun because it's really fun, but it's also um, improving their performance. And that's something we have demonstrated in the uh, professional sim simulation industry where a lot of uh, uh, haptic, uh, a lot of uh, the racer, the professional racers are using our systems for training purpose. And, and so to come back on the Cooler Master deal, one of the things that I can say to investors because Obviously, you know, we're not in control of the launch, but, you know, we're in, you know, a lot of discussions with them. You know, one thing, uh, you know, just, just to provide some context to investors, you know, there was about a dozen of people involved in both organizations and uh, for the launch this year. And what's interesting is that we started to see all the uh, marketing uh, promotions uh, uh, videos, promotional videos and images, and they're really nice, you know, so I think people will be gladly to see, you know, in the upcoming months, you know, once they start to see those uh, 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 ads from Cooler Master, that they will understand why we chose Cooler Master because of that uh, marketing expertise they have built over the years. I think we're making sure we wanted to have it for today. So D-Box has great products. Sometimes some shareholders said, well, how come your products are not sexy? So that's why we partner. So we'd have loved to have that video today. And as soon as we can put that public, Martin, I'll send that to you and you're going to be able to put that for all shareholders. So, so yes, it's going to be sexy. Well, I, I gather that you, you've got the blurred out image and you're, said you, you're seeing some promotional materials. It seems like we're getting pretty close and... Would it be fair to expect that we're getting sort of a launch into the fall Christmas season that that's um, hopefully when uh, the launch of the product would be because that's kind of the key time to do it. Definitely, Martin. You're right on it. Okay. All right. All right. And with the Cooler Master, that is that an exclusive agreement or once that goes, you can because there, there there's so many accessory companies out there and chair companies and 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 so forth. No, no. When people are asking for exclusivity, they all ask. We say, give me a, a sizable check for the company, and we'll start discussing. So there's no exclusivity. But the the way we enter because it's new product. So yes, it's true as well to say that in the gaming, we're not looking to have ten resellers. So we we're looking to to start with two three. So, 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 uh, Colder Master is the first one. We anticipate more, um, and of course, we're public company. So, when we'll have something official, we will we'll disclose that. But we anticipate other consumer launches in upcoming month as well. All right. So, closing remark. Looking at the time quickly and keep some questions. So, 
just want to, to, to resume, as you say, we're going to have a, a, in a couple of months uh, an upgrade. So definitely, I think theatrical recovery is important. So David talked about that. We have sizable information from tickets to memory, even in social distanciation, that theatrical is not dead. And as you know, it's a recurring business model with big margins. So it's going to have a tremendous impact for us progressively. We do have as well a commercial market return. So you saw the Cinemark announcement. So this is good as well. So we're going to have our traditional, I would say pre-COVID $30 million business coming back. So this is a start. Uh, content expansion. So we mentioned about that series, movies, experiences. So we definitely want to have announcement with content partner, but as well to scale with AI and tools. And, and this was a pivotal year for as well. So we've made some early positioning in consumer, but this year is all about consumer product launches and there's an S at launch. So yes, we anticipate on everything that we're trying to forecast to have more launches this year in the, in the, in the current fiscal year. A quick one to finish. So, so definitely uh, we, we debug as strong foundation. So I'll go quickly for a, a teaser to bring all people to cinema. So Mr. Steve, it's going to be 15 seconds. So I, I'll talk briefly after that, but that's our finish for the people that haven't seen it. We're family, Dom. So I'll give you and your crew the same deal you gave me. Leave now. You drive away and you never come back, ever. I ain't going anywhere, little brother. Get your tickets to F9 and D-Box and buckle so up for quickly said, I hope people will go to the movie, movie, but I just wanted to add, so we when we're GTA saying that game. people are looking for immersivity, in the past, we'd have, paid, we'd have loved or we'd, to pay $100,000 to get that, so we get that for free now. And even if you look at social media, we're going to have behind the sign scene footage that we work with them because they want to create, as we know, more content for social media. So this is good. Uh, we anticipate great result for us on that movie, which has already started in international, but as well, it proves the relation we're able to build to create content, which is gonna be bringing, of course, as well to commercial and home business. So gentlemen, start your engine and go to the movie. <laughs> I think a lot of people, I, I'm looking forward to getting out and, uh, and that, yeah, I, I yeah.